welcome to Rome. Hi, I'm Megan, a travel content creator, and I am visiting Rome for the very first time. I'm traveling with my mom, and we are going to tell you everything that we feel we did right, and everything that we feel we did wrong, so that you can learn from it. Now, I actually majored in ancient Roman history in college, so I'm super excited to see all of the historical sites, but we also love shopping and food. But before we get started, make sure that you click subscribe so you never miss a travel minute. I was really worried coming to Rome because I knew that my feeble attempts to learn Italian and Duolingo just weren't going to be enough if I had to speak Italian to get around. Fortunately, I found in Rome that pretty much everybody speaks English, so it's okay if you don't speak Italian. That being said, my feeble attempts at at least saying good evening and hello and thank you and please in Italian have certainly been appreciated. And I find that whenever you travel someplace, it's always a nice gesture to at least attempt to learn a little bit of the language. I do also have a huge suggestion. I use Google Translate, so when I'm in a situation where someone hasn't spoken English and we had to communicate, in Italian, I can just easily type it into Google Translate and I can show the person I'm talking to what I'm trying to say and then they can type back and we can communicate that way. So if you speak no Italian at all, Google Translate, it's free. It's a website and it will be an absolute lifesaver for you. This is why you never need to buy a new bottle of water when you are in Rome. So these are called Nassoni. They mean big nose. <laughs> they get its name because this faucet looks a bit like a big nose. Now in the 1870s, Rome wanted to bring fresh, clean, cool water to its citizens. So it installed these all over Rome. There are currently over, I believe, 2,000. And it's the same water that goes into homes, so it's totally clean. You can refill your water bottle if you want, or if you don't have a water bottle, that is okay. You can take your finger like this, and it becomes a water fountain. And it's so cool, perfect for a heat wave. While the Nassoni may be free, it has been at least my experience that when I go out to eat, it's impossible to get tap water. You get a choice between still or sparkling water. It comes in a bottle. They do charge you money. I've asked for tap water. They've looked at me like I had a second head. The horror of this, even though I'm told that Rome has really wonderful drinking water. So just be prepared for that. And we've also noticed that some restaurants charge like a head fee for water and bread and olive oil. So be prepared. When you come to Rome, you have to take a tour. Now, I took a couple of tours with City Experiences, including one called Rome in a Day. It was a seven and a half hour long tour, but you saw all of the major sites, including the Colosseum, the Vatican, the Sistine Chapel, the Pantheon, and the Trevi Fountain. And I just thought this was really, really fabulous because you get to get all of the, you know, postcard sites done, and then you really get to take in the energy of Rome the rest of your trip. When they tell you that Roman July is hot, they are not kidding. Today it's gonna to be over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So bring your sunscreen, dress appropriately, and be prepared to be out in the sun a lot. Oh, and a lot of the museums and the attractions, including the Colosseum, are not air conditioned. It's July in Rome, and it is hot. I'm originally from Florida. This is hotter than what I usually experience growing up in Florida. This heat is intense for New York heat. So I just want to give you some advice. So I bought this hat in Sicily. It's a wonderful hat. It's light. It lets the breeze through, but it keeps the sun off my face. Now I also have this light little scarf. This also doubles as something that can cover my shoulders. If you go into something like a church or a religious site, you're going to need to have your shoulders covered, but it keeps the sun off of my back, which is really, really wonderful. Of course, sunglasses. And then I have a very breezy dress and that lets, it, it's nothing is really tight on my body. So that allows whatever breeze there is in so just a little advice, but uh, be prepared. It's going to be hot. If you need one of those portable fans, bring those portable fans. There's no shame in doing what you need to do to stay cool in this crazy heat. 
I'm just outside the side of the Pantheon, which is a religious site in Rome. Remember, if you visit a religious site in Rome, you do need to have your shoulders covered, and some religious sites even require that you cover your knees. And this is very strictly enforced in places such as the Vatican. We took a tour at the Vatican, and people on our tour who did not have something such as a scarf to cover their shoulders weren't allowed in until they went out to purchase a scarf. So I, I really love these. Just make sure that you are dressed appropriately. You have either a shirt or a scarf to cover your shoulders when you enter a religious site. Hello, puppy. One thing that I was not prepared for in Rome was the crazy crowds. If you're visiting any of the major attractions, the Colosseum, the Vatican, the Trevi Fountain, just be prepared for a lot of people. I'm visiting in July. I've been told that these are really crowded all the time, but July is the height of the, the crowded season. Now, if you're visiting an attraction that is ticketed, you want to make sure that you purchase those tickets well in advance, get the time tickets, get the skip the line tickets. And this is a case where having a tour might really, really help you. I took a tour of the Vatican. It helped us get timed entry. It minimized that waiting time, and you're going to want to do that well in advance. So I'm from New York City. I was not prepared for these crowds. So you, know, you can't even like take a selfie <laughs> without people here. So be prepared. Right now I'm standing outside the Pantheon. You can see how crazy the crowds are to get in. This is not unusual in Rome. So you definitely want to make sure that you book your tickets to these attractions well in advance. And I'm not talking about like the morning of, I'm talking about a day, sometimes even a week or more in advance. This is a shock for me. I don't normally have the issue of not being able to get into an attraction in New York City, but here in Rome, you have to book those attractions in advance. In addition to visiting all of Rome's main attractions, the Colosseum, the Vatican, make sure that you leave time to explore some of Rome's beautiful parks. Especially in the summertime, it can get really hot. Today the temperature is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's a great way to cool off. Also, if you have kids, kids are going to love running around in the park, using it as a playground. Right now, I'm probably going to mispronounce it, but we are in a place that I believe is called Passaggiata del Pincio, and they have a bouncy castle set up. We saw a bunch of kids using that as a playground and having so much fun. So it's a great way of seeing another side of Rome. One of the biggest shocks to me coming to Rome from New York is how difficult it is to get a cab. So there are these little cab stations. Right now it's very lucky because we have a lot of cabs waiting, but there have been times when I have come and I've had to wait 30 minutes for a single cab to come to the cab stations. Now they also have things such as Uber where you can try to call a car, but it's been my experience that when I try to call a car, um, even if a driver answers, they'll cancel the trip and I end up having to wait 30 minutes anyway. So just be prepared to allow extra time and look for these taxi stops stations when you come to Rome if you're looking for a car. In Rome, you can walk almost anywhere. Now on this specific trip, we've chosen to not use the metro. We have taken a few buses and we have taken a few taxis, but it's been really impressive that almost every place that we've wanted to go in Rome, we could get to using our own two feet. Now, of course, some of these walks have been closer to 40 minutes and every day we easily clock in between 20,000 and 10,000 steps. So if you bring your walking shoes, you'll be able to walk around and discover some really cool treasures of Rome that you might not have noticed otherwise. So we found really cool shops, really cool restaurants, and really cool historical sites that way. So just know you definitely don't need a car. I would be scared driving here. You can get around using some public transportation, but most of it can be done with your own two feet. Something else to watch out for in Rome is how tiny the sidewalks are. The cars come so close, so you definitely want to be careful. My mom definitely got her foot run over. She's okay, but this is something that I'm certainly not used to. How close the cars come to you, how tiny the sidewalks are. And I've been told by some local Romans that even at crosswalks, the street signs are more like suggestions for both cars and pedestrians. So be on your, be on your A game walking around Rome. When we first said that we were coming to Rome, people asked us if we were gonna rent a car. 
And even at one point when we were having some transportation troubles getting from one point to another, someone said, well, you should just rent a car. What do you think of that, Mom? No way, Jose. <laughs> this traffic is crazy. It's pedestrians against cars, against delivery vehicles, against scooters, against bicyclists. No way, a narrow, 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 twisty turkey. So our recommendation is take cabs, take public transportation, use your own two feet, but do not rent cars. I don't care what anybody says, when you come to Rome, my suggestion is to bring your sneakers and wear your sneakers all the time. You can see the ground's not always level. You're gonna be walking a lot, sometimes over cobblestone streets. So you're gonna be so much more comfortable and so much more happy in sneakers. The other thing is when it comes to, you know, blending in with locals, I usually ask my tour guides. I've taken two tours and both tour guides, they were wearing sneakers. And I asked them, you know, do locals wear sneakers? And they said, maybe they don't wear sneakers so much, but when you're touring, when you're walking, when you're acting as a guide, you have to wear sneakers and it's not going to make you stand out as a tourist. So wear your sneakers with pride. Talking about why you should wear sneakers. We're walking back and we saw that somebody had lost both of their shoe heels. <laughs> Wanted to take a moment to give these bags a shout out. I know that they are not Gucci. I know that they are not Chloe. They might not be the trendiest, but these are travel on bags and they are pickpocket proof. Now what makes them pickpocket proof is the zippers actually hook on to these little clasps right here. So it just makes it harder for someone to get in because they have to actually unzip it. Now this one has three different pockets. I'm able to carry my camera, my microphone, my phone, an extra battery, a bottle of water, sunglasses, keys, all sorts of stuff in here. And it's worked great. I gave it a little flare with my scarf. And then my mom's is a little bit bigger. It's wonderful because it has this exterior water bottle pouch. And it also has this little back pocket here. So they've been really, really wonderful for our trip to Rome. You can get them at Amazon or Macy's. I'll try to put a link in the comments. Also, I will never travel without air tags again. These have been a total game changer. I put one in my bag whenever I go out. T to be totally honest, I have found every single person in Rome to be so friendly. Um, when I was watching YouTube videos, people were like, oh my God, there's tons of pickpockets. Uh, we have 24 hours left, but so far my experience has not been that there are tons of pickpockets, but I do feel really good knowing that I have an air tag in my bag so that if anything does happen, including me just being forgetful and leaving a bag behind, it's there. I can also track my luggage with it, which has been like such a game changer. It gives me such confidence. We've had a little bit of trouble at some of the airports. I was like, I hope my bag makes it onto the plane. These air tags let me know that it was on the plane. It was at baggage claim. So air tags, <laughs> a must for travel. When you visit Rome, something to know is that hotels by law have to ask you for your passport. So just have your passport ready to show. They're not checking you out. It's just part of the law. Now, also by law in Italy, different cities have to charge a different amount per person per night of your stay. That's not included in the original hotel bill. So. For us, it's about seven euro per night. It's not a scam. Just know when you get that bill, it is something that's required in Italy by law. I love to shop. My favorite place that I found to shop in Rome is around the Spanish steps. As you can see, there's all these like, crazy high-end name brands around here. But if you go just a little bit further in, there are all these like little streets where you can find boutiques that have things you can only get in Italy. My favorite is a glove place where they make these gloves in Italy. They're just the most gorgeous gloves in the world uh, and they are right near the Spanish steps. So if you're looking for great shopping, you want to come to the area around the Spanish steps. When you visit Rome, my suggestion is that you want to keep sufficient cash on hand and places where you might need to use cash. It's been my experience that if we take a cab, a lot of times the cab drivers won't take credit card. So you really want to have cash on hand for that. And also there are situations where we have wanted to tip tip the house cleaning staff, tip the concierge, tip your tour guide. And of course, Italy doesn't have the same sort of tipping culture that the United States does, but there have certainly been times when a tip was appropriate and you really need to have cash on hand for that.
that. So whether you come to Italy and you use an ATM here, or you get your cash before you fly over to Italy, just make sure that you have some cash. In terms of tipping in Italy, it's been so strange because in New York City, we have a huge tipping culture. We tip for everything. Now in Italy, my understanding is it's not that same way. Everyone is paid a living wage, so your waiters paid a living wage, and of course no one's going to be upset if you leave a tip, but it's not the same situation as it is in the United States where the waiter won't eat if you don't leave a tip. I think it's a nice gesture to maybe leave a euro or two if the service was really great. And I do think that you still need to tip your house cleaning staff if you're staying in a hotel, your concierge if they do it in a Amazing job and of course tip your tour guides. We're at a restaurant that my friend recommended called Bucatino. This is the pasta Bucatini which gives the restaurant its name. It is phenomenal. It's apparently pasta that looks like spaghetti but is shaped like a straw. This is some of the best pasta I've ever had. We got such big portions that even though I'm so full, we've eaten so much, it looks like we haven't even made a dent in it. And if pasta gets any better than this, ah, my brain's going to explode. The portions, at least in my experience, have been huge. This is a half portion. It's bigger than my head. It is giant. Um, we're actually splitting one portion, but when you come to Rome, be prepared to eat. In Rome, a mistake that we made was not making restaurant reservations super far in advance. A lot of the restaurant recommendations that we got required that you had a reservation three weeks in advance. So if someone gives you like a super hot restaurant, you want to make sure that you get those reservations. Now the reason why you have to make these reservations so far in advance is because you tend to have the table for the whole night. So instead of like a fast turnover in the United States, you have this table for the whole night. Now right now, I'm at a place called, I'm going to mispronounce it, but it's Cecilia Santa Cucina. This is seriously my favorite meal in all of Rome. You have to come here. It's where we are choosing to have our last dinner in Rome. Something that really surprised us in Rome is what time people eat. Now in the US, I typically tend to eat my dinner around six o'clock, maybe seven o'clock. Here, a lot of the restaurants don't even open for dinner until seven o'clock. People eat very, very late in Rome. So when in Rome, be prepared to have a late dinner. This chocolate cigar is perhaps the most important lesson of all when you visit Rome. We had so many restaurants that were recommended to us. They were all amazing. So many attractions, so many tours. Right now I'm at Cecilia Santa Cucina, which we wandered into by accident. I'm in shock that it's not sold out every single night because the food literally deserves at least one Michelin star, if not three Michelin stars. And look at how creative their food is. It comes in this hand with a chocolate cigar and some ice cream. So my point is, when you visit Rome, don't be afraid to just go with the flow. You don't have to get so stressed out about following the guidebooks and following the influencers and following what your friends say. Wander the paths. Sometimes your plan B is gonna be better than your plan A and have fun. It's your vacation. Live the sweet life in Rome. When you visit Rome, you'll probably find that there are thousands of tour books and thousands of influencers and thousands of friends who are telling you, you know, these are the trendiest restaurants that you have to eat at and these are the neighborhoods that you have to visit and it can be super overwhelming. Now, I have personally found that every single recommendation that I have gotten has been wonderful. However, there have been times when we haven't been able to get a reservation at a restaurant or get into an attraction, and we've just kind of wandered around. We've wandered into a random restaurant, a random shop, a random attraction, and it's been every bit as amazing as the recommendations. So don't put so much pressure on yourself to have to do everything that people recommend. Let yourself just wander because that's how you're really gonna experience the city the best, and you might have some of the best, most memorable and authentic experiences that way. 
I hope that this video has helped you know what to expect when you come to visit Rome, and I hope that it helps you get your very best Rome travel experience. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click subscribe so you never miss a travel moment, especially if you're visiting New York City. I have hundreds of videos about New York City. So thank you so much for watching and happy travels.